Hi there, this is Solid Chironin from Solid Chironin Films and welcome to another episode of In Memoriam. Um, I haven't put pictures um, on the background as I usually do because um, I just found out from a um, friend of the channel and subscriber Ben um, that we lost Roger Corman at the age of 98. Um, so I haven't prepared this video again. I could list all the films that we've all enjoyed that Roger Corman made. Um, I could list all the people that Roger Corman gave breaks to in the film industry who went on to their own wonderful careers from John Sayles and Jack Nicholson and Dick Miller and John Milius and Martin Scorsese and Coppola and all manner of people that are far too um, numerous to mention. Again, I could talk about his wonderful films that he directed and produced, The Man with X-Ray Eyes and the Poe series with um, Vincent Price, of course, um, Premature Burial, which is one of my favourites, um, you know, to the 80s and Battle Beyond the Stars and making films cheap and quick um, you know with little budget but somehow making these charming lovable little films um, but I'm not going to I'm going to talk just briefly um, about Roger Corman who he was a tough businessman but I've never heard anybody talk about him being a monster or um, and at 98 years old I can't remember the last time that I've been um, certainly bummed out by somebody age 98 dying um, but it does feel like we've lost like a fun uncle you know um, the sort of uncle that would come round to maybe works in a circus or something like that and works in the entertainment business and would dazzle us with stories of um, celebrities and um, Roger Corman's commentaries on his films are always magnificent again about you know low budget filmmaking how to use your cast sparingly you know with the time that you actually have them for um, you know when you look at St Valentine's Day Massacre um, at the time that was his biggest budget and I think that was a million dollars I could be wrong um, with Jason Robards um, you know being an NFL fan people talk about coaching trees um, you know the Bill Walsh tree and all these assistants that became successful head coaches you know Bill Belichick's coaching tree hasn't been that successful um, but if you talk about Roger Corman's filmmaking tree and all the branches and um, that come out it's phenomenal and again I know some of his films have their knockers um, and you know Roger Corman films aren't you know deemed as being high art um, outside of perhaps some French critics um, and some people might have some snobbery about Roger Corman films but Roger Corman is just one of the, I think he does belong in the Mount Rushmore of cinema um, creators or inspirators um, or influencers. Um, his legacy runs through all of American cinema pretty much um, and it's certainly he will never be forgotten um, and he certainly deserves never to be forgotten plus he was a sneaky good little actor um, 
obviously re-watching Silence of the Lambs recently, you kind of forget he was in Silence of the Lambs briefly. Um, again, we don't know what happens behind closed doors, but he just always seemed like such a nice man. Now, obviously, he couldn't be completely nice because he was in a cutthroat business um, and usually had to shave dollars off budgets all the time. Um, but it is sad when we do lose somebody like that. Um, but again, 98 years old, he had... He lived a life that not many of us can even dream about. Um, you know, helping to make alien worlds out of tinfoil and bits of cardboard. Um, but still, his films, no matter how sleazy or violent at times, um, there still was an innocence about his work, um, and an innocence about the man. Um, because again, films are make-believe. Um, they're not realistic, no matter how you know we talk about Italian neorealism or documentary filmmaking um, or documentary like filmmaking. You know, it's still not reality. There is a camera involved, so it's not reality. Even though you could argue people walking about with their phones all the time, it's almost close to being in a film the whole of your life. Um, but he was one of the dream weavers. And again, his influence and inspiration, and he started so many careers um, of people that would go on to achieve great things. Um, it's just pretty upsetting that people like that can't live until they're 198. Um, it's almost as if the human body had built-in obsolescence or something. Um, so thanks very much for watching. As you can tell, this was completely random and unscripted and unprepared. Um, but I just thought I would take a few minutes to mention Roger Corman. Um, because again, in this world of big budget blockbusters and people spending a hundred million dollars just on advertising, um, you kind of forget the roots of American independent cinema, the roots of American cinema itself. I mean, we talk about the golden age of Hollywood, but the golden age of Hollywood was basically built on immigrant filmmakers. Um, well, a lot of it was built on immigrant filmmakers um, running from um, Europe. Yeah, Roger Corman gone, but certainly not forgotten. And I'm sure um, he will never be forgotten because um, we all know what a Roger Corman film stands for, um, whether you like that or not, whether you look down your nose on that or not. Um, but you shouldn't because Roger Corman was one of the most um, important people in the history of American cinema um, and should be remembered thusly. So thanks very much for watching. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying farewell. <laughs>